Joining me now is the newest member of the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship roster, Felice Herrig. Uh, just clear, clear things up right off the bat. We saw you retire in MMA. You never said anything about other combat sports. You actually mentioned boxing as a possibility. And here you are. Um, just uh, talk to me about what has happened since we spoke to you a couple weeks ago. I did. Um, so the whole thing is, you know, when I retired from MMA, it was clearly MMA for me. Also, you know, with the UFC, like you got to make sure you're like, I'm out of their contract now. You know, I can do what I want. I, I don't want to fight MMA. I, I have no desire to fight MMA. Um, I think, too, like, after the two knee surgeries, like, well, first off, I started fighting as a boxer and a kickboxer. I think people forget that just because I've been fighting for so long. You know, 20 years is a long time. But I started in the striking realm. And I only um, got into MMA because at the time it was like I had watched – you know, the very first um, Ultimate Fighter. Um, I was on the reality show Fight Girls. Gina Carano was, you know, was my coach on there. You know, she training with like Randy Couture. You know, I was, Car Carrie Vera was on that with Brandon Vera. So I saw that everything was going towards MMA, which is why I got into MMA. But I never loved MMA. I've always loved boxing. And I, I knew that like going into my last fight that it's probably gonna be like, no matter what the outcome was, it was likely going to be my last fight. Like, I knew that. But then I just feel like, too, like, I, I tried so hard. And, like, it was, like, three years, like, dealing with, like, this knee surgery, like, one after the other. Like, I had, I had to have a second knee surgery because the first surgeon did it wrong. And it was just, like, there's just so much to MMA. It's, like, you got to worry about wrestling and you got to worry about jiu-jitsu and you got to do boxing and kickboxing and you got to like plan for a specific opponent who's oh she's a wrestler or you know this like it was just like ah like so much like for me and then like driving to, from like all these different gyms like driving an hour away like I was just kind of tired of always like trying to like figure it out all over again and every time I go to boxing it was like the best day of the week I was like I love this, this is my favorite I've always known it was my favorite. You know, my boxing coach is my favorite. Like he was like my very first coach from like day one. And I just, I, we would always talk about it, how, you know, he's like, Felice, you're not, you're not done with boxing. Like we're, he's like, you have unfinished business in boxing because I do have very good boxing. Um, and so I'm just excited. Like I finally feel like I've been in the sport for so long and I finally get to do what I actually love, which is striking, you know, boxing. Yeah, I'm obviously super happy to hear that. And I went back and, you know, listened to your scrum after your retirement fight in MMA. And I could hear that you were really still had some passion for that. So I'm obviously very excited for you. Was the bare knuckle aspect something that was on your mind at all? Like, did you foresee that crossover? I mean, you're certainly not the, the first MMA fighter to jump to that organization. So was that something that was in the back of your mind as, as something you were hoping for? Um, it was, but mostly like, I, I didn't want to do it if I couldn't box as well. So with my contract with um, Bare Knuckles, I have the opportunity to also fight for Triller. And um, I, I mean, I finished like after like retiring from MMA, like, nothing was ever really about the money. You know, if I boxed and didn't make a whole lot of money, I wouldn't really care. I just feel like that's what I was born to do. That's what I love to do. That's what, you know, I, I, I did my thing in the sport of MMA. I did my thing in kickboxing. Like I've, I've done my thing. I have nothing left to prove other than like being able to compete in the boxing realm um, and do well and be successful in it. Um, but even if I wasn't, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm at least doing what I love. Um, I guess, you know, bare knuckle just because like they've they've gotten so big over the past year and they do a really great job with like, you know, promotion and like production and like paying the fighters well. And um, also, you know, I think that was another another thing for not just for myself, but a lot of strikers got into MMA just because if you wanted to make a career and you wanted to get paid, like you had to go to MMA like UFC was like the the biggest organization and really like what everyone strived for and the the biggest opportunity but now like 
there are a lot of other opportunities to make money and to be successful in, you know, not just in MMA, you know, and not just in the UFC. And so I figured bare knuckle would probably be on the horizon just because that's probably where I would make the most money, <laughs> you know? Um, but again, um, I also like that I'm not like just stuck to bare knuckle. Like I can also box and that's, that makes me happy, you know, just being able to do both and on Triller. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think you just might've answered my next question before I even asked it, but um, it's probably been a while since you were a free agent of, or of sorts, or you could explore your options. So um, was that really what it was? Was this just a no brainer because of that versatility and obviously because of, of the pay that they offer MMA fighters? Oh yeah. I mean, even like being in the UFC and again, like, I don't, like I was in the UFC for a long time. Like I don't have like animosity towards the UFC. I'm not um, talking shit about the UFC. Um, I did my thing in there, but even like after the, the surgeries, like I, I hated not having the opportunity to box because it's like, I'm waiting to like have this MMA fight. And like, I had to get my knee to a certain point to fight MMA, but I didn't have to get my knee to that same level for boxing. And it would have been nice to have been able to like, just stay busy and, and box and not be like completely shelved for like three years, you know, trying to deal with these like knee surgeries. I would have loved to have had the opportunity to, you know, to box. And I think too, as you get older, you, you start thinking about like, how much longer do I really have left in fighting? And I never thought that before because I always thought, you know, when I first started fighting, which I'm sure a lot of the younger fighters all think like, I'm going to, you know, I thought, oh, I'm going to be fighting into my 40s and this, you know, and it's like, yeah, that's the problem. That's the thing with, with fighters is like you want to fight forever. I think that's the same thing with all like professional athletes. You you want to like your heart's in it, but you don't realize the the things that go on in your body that just say no, you know what I mean especially as the sport's growing so much and these younger fighters are coming in who you know know that there's like so many opportunities for them to excel and make a career in the sport so they start now they're all starting as little kids you know in jiu-jitsu and karate and boxing you know like you know they're they're ahead of the game now because they they see like what the future holds um so I forgot the question but <laughs> I um, I, I also, yeah, I, I do not like that. I, I feel like I was shelved and I didn't, because I wasn't a free agent, I didn't have the opportunity to like do other things while I was waiting for my knee to like get better just so I could fight MMA, which is something that wasn't even in my heart to really do anymore. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, I think you mentioned it earlier. Was there, I think the thing that surprised people about this was like how quickly this all happened, right? You went from your retirement, then this all of a sudden, boom with bare knuckle like there was no it's not like this is six months difference was there any sort of contract do you thing you had to work out with the ufc like i know chad mendez said like you know when he retired his contract was frozen or whatever was that something that you had to get approval for to, to do these boxing matches no i think the great thing is is that it was the last fight of my contract oh. anyways and i think that that was a big reason why i like i knew like coming back from my knee surgeries i almost knew that i had to fight one more fight it's not the only reason why I did it was to like get out of the UFC contract, but a big part of it, like a big part of me coming back from my knee surgery, you know, and fighting like was to see like if I could do it or just to say that I could like, maybe I didn't win my last fight, but I did overcome like two major knee surgeries and that was hard in itself to do. Um, and I, you know, I did come back and I fought and things didn't go my way, but at least two, I know that like I, after that fight, like I was a free agent anyways, so might as well just go and fight and not have to try to negotiate out of a contract anyways, you know? So I was a free agent. Yeah. Talk to me about the wake of that, uh, that last MMA fight. I know obviously probably there was a lot you were dealing with that night and uh, just the emotions of the whole thing. But I think particularly when we see MMA retirements, a lot of good tributes come in. But for you, I think in particular, it seemed like a lot of people had nice things to say, particularly some of the women fighters that were, you know, watched you growing up. Uh, did you get a moment like after the, the dust settled, kind of sit back and, and see all those those messages and stuff? And I mean, you said on fight night, you felt proud and not proud of yourself for your MMA career. Has that changed at all? Um, I guess I go back like, you know what? 
used to make me so proud is I used to like before I bought this house I've been in my house for like two and a half years now I mean people would say it was like a shrine to myself but it was like I had like all these like fight like posters and like fight photos and whatnot so that was always like a constant reminder of like how much I've done in the sport and how far I've come and like the fact that like I went from a kickboxer and boxer and I've excelled in Muay Thai and you know, got all these kickboxing championships and I've done boxing and like had like got into MMA like with zero MMA experience and had to start as a pro. So for that I feel accomplished and then I feel accomplished for, you know, I was on the Ultimate Fighter the very first season and I was, you know, in the top ten like until my knee surgeries, you know, I was in the top ten like my entire, you know, MMA career. And I fought great girls and I beat great girls. And so for that, like, I, I kind of have gone back and realized, like, I do have a lot to be proud of. Um, I was the first in a lot of things. Um, but I think for myself, the thing, I guess when I said I wasn't proud, I think the, what I meant the most was is because I know what a great athlete I am. And I know what I have, like, in the gym. But I feel like sometimes like the stress of like camps and still like working with all the different disciplines and like driving an hour to go to the gym to train and then like having to like cut weight to where it's like I almost feel like my body doesn't want to make 115 anymore. Like I still make it, but it's like I have to like be so disciplined in like my diet as far as like not eating the amount of calories that I need to sustain being like strong. Um, I feel like every time I figure it out, like something new is happening. Like, oh, you know, my kickboxing coach has left my gym. So now I got to figure out where I'm going to get my kickboxing from or, oh, my, you know, MMA gym has decided that now he's just going to be a jujitsu gym. And then like feeling like, or, oh, I gotta, I'm in a camp, I gotta figure out who I'm gonna fly out to like be my training partners because I don't have any girls at the gym and then leaving the gym and now being like, oh, now I gotta drive an hour away again. And like, I feel like I, it was just like constantly trying to like figure things out to make MMA work. Like nothing ever felt like, like it was the right, like the right fit. Like everything always felt like it was just so hard to figure everything out. And then once I figured it out, I'm like refiguring it out. Even like with my body, like I feel like for the last fight, I feel like I overtrained because I know that like my body, I know how much like my body can train. And I know that like, especially as I get older, I know the importance of like rest and recovery, but training with different coaches they don't understand that. So they're looking at me like, like I'm a 20 year old Felice and like wanting to push me, push me, push me. And like thinking that like training harder is being like training smarter, you know? And I'm like, mm, maybe sometimes it's not, you know, it's training smarter and not harder. And um, so it's not even just dealing with like myself. Like I feel like I've been peer pressured by other coaches who don't know me to like tell me that I don't know what's best for my body. And I'm just, you know, and then just dealing with all these different coaches. Like, I'm just, I'm excited to simplify it. And just, I think that that's the biggest thing. And I feel like I was, I'm not like as proud of what I've accomplished in MMA because I feel like my performances of lately haven't necessarily been what I'm capable of. It's just like so many outside circumstances that have caused like all this extra stress. And like, for me, like stress has been a big thing because of like, you know, like the stress and the anxiety and it's always like messing with my hormones and I'm constantly having to get my labs done by, you know, my, my, like my doctor and like, oh yeah, your cortisol is completely depleted. That comes from stress. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I feel like I haven't been able to like perform because of all this ex excess stress in my life. And I feel like being able to just focus on boxing is going to eliminate so many stress factors for me. Yeah, that makes obviously a ton of sense there, which bodes the next question of when do you think we'll see you sooner rather than later? You're taking some time off now that, you know, the UFC things behind you or do you think we'll see you soon? Um, it's not necessarily that I want to take time off like mentally. It's almost like physically. Um, 
I, during, you know, the knee surgeries, like I was nonstop. I did everything in my power to like make sure that like my knee was going to be good and healthy and strong. So I feel like I've been in a training camp for like three years <laughs> and like my good knee actually hurts more than my injured knee that's had the two surgeries. And I think it's just like overcompensated for so long. Um, so I'm going, I took the whole week off of training <laughs> and I'm going on a cruise this week. Um, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to come back and I'm, I'm actually starting a yoga teacher training program. Um, so I've been wanting to do that for a long time too, but like MMA has always like shut everything out of my life to where I have ever wanted to take on anything new, um, to like, you know, enhance myself. Um, so that, um, will end in December. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to maybe fight around like December, um, just because I would like to be able to focus on, you know, that aspect as well. Um, but, uh, so we'll see. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like I, 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 I feel like for so long, I've always felt pressured, like to fight, fight, fight. Like, this is what you are. This is who you are. This is what you do. And of course I do want to fight. Um, but I also just feel like my body maybe needs a little time to just recover and, um, not be in like beast mode all the time, you know, not be like a machine, just kind of be like a normal person for a bit. Yeah, no, I get that. You, you certainly deserve it. Uh, you know, um, congratulations on all the, the exciting things going on in your life. And I guess, um, you know, last question for me is, I don't know how much time you've had to really look at the roster or anything. Is there any fights out there that interest you? Obviously there's a lot of names, uh, MMA fans are familiar with Paige Van Zandt. I don't know how many more fights she has left on her contract. You got Rachel Ostevich, you got all sorts of other women in that, in, in, in that division. Um, is there anybody out there that you're like, Hey, this would be cool if my, my face was next to theirs on the poster. I mean, yes. And no, I promised my manager I wouldn't call anyone out <laughs> I promised, on the interviews and I promised I wouldn't talk yeah. shit. So a lot of that too is just for like my own personal, um, he knows like how much stress that can, like, it's almost me adding more stress to my plate, you know, like calling somebody out and talking shit. It's like, it puts pressure on me. And right now I just don't want the pressure. You know, I feel like I've dealt with enough the past few years just with like, my surgeries and I'm just like feeling like, and I hate when people are like, I'm so blessed. Like, but I feel, I do, I feel blessed to just be able to still, after 20 years, still be able to be in the sport and to do what I love. Um, and for me, like, especially going into my first fight in bare knuckle, like the least amount of stress as possible is very good because, um, I just, I just want to be happy for a little bit and not feel like I'm like putting all this pressure on myself. <laughs> no, I, I totally respect that. Well, Felice, I've taken up enough of your time. I really appreciate the time you gave us today. Best of luck with everything. Congrats on the, 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 uh, the MMA career coming to an end.